two, three, four. Sometimes I need to slow it down. Take a look around. Good evening and welcome to the Just Love Show. I um, want everyone to take a big deep breath and like I always do, make sure you give thanks. And I'm fired up today. I mean, give, by the way, I really like that song, even though it's my song. I, I kind of, I was listening to the lyrics to it. That, that was a divinely inspired song. <laughs> so anyway, I am very fired up and I hope you're all giving thanks because that this show is all about thinking differently. This show is going to be about really looking at the abundance you have in your life and realizing that you have so much to share and by sharing you will get so much in return um, and that we need to start living out the truths that we for generations upon generations, millennium upon millennium have been told by all the great masters who we hold in the highest regard as the highest ideals of what we can be. Um, so like I do every show, before I get going um, and introduce my, my dear friend and wonderful guest, uh, who will be a big surprise here in a couple of minutes. Um, I will uh, read a little something to you, for you, I should say. Uh, let's see. And actually, I just wrote this today, and it's perfect for the show. It is time that we must challenge ourselves to live out the values that we say represent our higher selves, our true selves, our soul. The values of Buddha, Jesus, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and others. The values of peace, humility, gratefulness, forgiveness, sharing, understanding, empathy, unity, and above all else, love. If ever our transformation next is to come, we must live out, experience, not just speak like sheep fallen without connection to source. The ideals, the core operating system that we believe to be the divine foundational conscious essence that is the truth of our infinite being. It is time to walk the walk or be quiet and fade into the oblivion of our hypocrisy. And to follow that up, I've got a little quote from Martin Luther King. The first principle of value that we need to rediscover is this, that all reality hinges on our moral foundations. In other words, that this is a moral universe and that there are moral laws of the universe just as abiding as the physical laws. And this is from Rediscovering the Lost Values, Martin Luther King. I also want to give you a, a great acronym for love today. Living our values every day. <clears throat> now, before I bring Jennifer Hillman on, the muse and inspiration for the Just Love Show and great friend and confidant, um, when, when Barack Obama first became president, I wrote him a long letter and I said, listen, if you go into this job, um, and, and you're, you're seek, you're, you are okay with half measures and not going for 
everything that you promised during your campaign, basically. You may go down as not a great president. Um, and I think for maybe, and maybe he had to do this. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't know how the future would look had he came into office being the president who is speaking his truth the way he is now. Um, but this was the president now, the man who is out there letting um, people out of prisons, the man who's standing up and uh, singing Amazing Grace, the man who is inspiring. I think this is the man we all voted for. The reason I'm sharing this story is because I realize that I haven't been exactly speaking my whole truth to you, that I've been telling nice stories, that I wanted to connect with you and, and share with you, um, and warnings. But I realize this is all, this, the truth of this comes down to each of us making the decision to live out our values every day. And so without further ado, I'm going to bring Jennifer on because we're both fired up to talk about this and to get you fired up about living out your values every day, living in love. Jennifer, welcome to the Just Love Show again. Always a pleasure to be here, Kip. So are you, are you as fired up as I am today? Yeah, it, it's been very interesting times of realization of really holding on to the experience that we've had in the past to push you forward to the correct perspective of what your story is really saying. And with that, you really are living your truth, living with love, and you're not doing it as you said. I just am correcting you because you said every day. It really should be in every moment. I stand perfectly corrected. <laughs> um, and... That's because every moment we are making choices that is going to lead to the next one. So with that, I mean, we are really part of a, a web and there is so many things that we do that impact other people. The show is very powerful in getting the messages out and getting the um, vibration of raising up to truly appreciate and value yourself and everyone around because we're all in this together. And as it's often say, you can live in fear and buy the illusion we live in, or you can just be in love, appreciate the experience and prosper and expand this loving energy that is so much who we truly are. Yes. And, and, and to, Take your point about the moment one step further. You actually have to live this out before the moment. Because if you don't, and we've talked about this on the show, then the moment decides for you. Exactly. There's always a decision. Yes. And, <laughs> you can make it or something else will. Yes, I am going to live in love and all the other values we talked about. But you do that regardless of what happens to you in the moment. That is the decision you have to make before the next moment occurs. So you can have the experience of the moment you truly want to have. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Um, there are so many things going on that are, it's just interesting to me. It's like I put out this thought and the synchronicities that happen to either give me a new perspective or confirm what I'm thinking or feeling or putting out there. It is truly amazing the energy that's out there right now. You know, something that just popped in my head that, uh, and, and we were having a great conversation before the show, which we're going to share as much of it as we can, but something we didn't um, touch on that just really uh, popped into my head, and I know from my own personal experience, uh, this is something that you it seems vitally important to share. You have to move beyond the guilt of your past. We, we, none of us are perfect. It's all part of this journey mm -hmm. of growing. Embrace all these experiences as an individual. They're, they're, are what's going to make you the beautiful being that you can be in this experience. All these things aren't necessarily negative at all. In fact, if anything, they're shared experiences that we can then go to another person and say, yeah, you did that too. That, that wasn't so much fun. <laughs> what was your takeaway? And, and now, instead of feeling like in shame, and shame is a horrible state to be in, it causes all sort of physical damage, spiritual blockage. 
um, we have to move beyond that shame of our perception of ourselves as imperfect. We are perfect. We are having the perfect experience that we're choosing to have. You want to have a different perfect experience? Choose differently. This all leads, the more you experience, the more you understand, the more you can let go of those experiences and look at them as teachings, the, 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 the better you are to choose the experience you truly want to have. Exactly. Exactly. And it's so every moment, even in the past, um, we've gotten hints of, hello, do you really want that? How about we rethink that? Um, I recently had a mirror bath on and we were talking about Atlantis and how it really is parallel. We are in a parallel existence as that is because the situations of the last Atlantis here, it blew up because of technology, about greed, about all the people that were choosing to be in the wrong kind of formation. They came in with love. They knew the truth when they first came in, and it went downhill. We're in exactly the same place. Absolutely. That and we can so change the outturn of instead of it imploding and blowing up and saying, okay, humanity, let's try this one more time. We can change it. So we truly in, embrace the infinite essence that we truly are and live in that loving, prosperous, abundant, true nature and really enjoy the experiences we're choosing. Um, and just have a big party instead of saying, okay, what the hell is going on? You know, there's, um, brings to, you know, we, we keep, that, that's the, the, the thing that has puzzled me for a long time. I mean, on one hand, we have great teachers from Buddha to Rumi to Jesus to Mohammed to Abraham to uh, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Einstein, on and on and on. We, we respect these people. We believe that they know what we truly are. They believe that they represent the highest ideals, the highest values that we can live by. Yet we still haven't begun as a collective to live those things out. We keep doing what destroyed, as you described, what destroyed Atlantis over and over and over again. The same thing that destroyed Atlantis, destroyed Rome. And now mm -hmm. if you believe Hopi prophecy, the Buddhist prophecy, we are now in exactly the same uh, place where the you know the Buddhists believe that this world will you know is coming to an end because of our decadence, because of our greed, because of all this, and then new world will manifest out of this. I'd like to believe that we don't have to do that again. I would like to believe that we can collectively wake up, but it's got to start with the individual. But one thing, there was a guest. Um, he was a Buddhist uh, who was on. Um, there was a rerun this past Sunday of Oprah's show, Super Soul Sunday. And he said something that I thought was it gave me pause for thought as we're talking. Um, he talked about how pain and suffering and all of these things, they're sticky. And maybe that's why it's so hard for us to move into these paradigms of pleasure and joy and perpetual abundance because it's like these, these things we pass down from generation, these pains, these, these little torments, these um, horrible shames, they're genetically somehow spiritually passed on to us from generation to generation, and we can't quite wash them clean. But we can now. We understand that. I mean, when we heal, it's like once we break the pattern, we break the pattern in seven generations backwards and forwards. What they do within those seven generations, once it's broken, it's broken. So there has been, there's a lot of train of thought of there's different groups of people that come down in different time frames because of what they know. The people of the 60s and the early 70s are the ones that really are here to work and change things. So that's where we are. We are part of this dynamic of saying, hello, we've learned our lessons, we're going to heal it, and we're going to improve it. Because if you look at the, the generations born in the later 70s, 80s, and 90s onward, they already know it. We may, in our generation, say, 
they seem entitled, that's because they already know it. They get it. Anything is possible. They're just demanding it. Whereas we didn't get that clue. Now, they might not appreciate it and take it for granted. But overall, they know exactly they can manifest anything they want. And overall, they're really good at doing it. They may not be appreciating, like I said, but our generation is really the ones that is here to say, okay, we need to clear up all the the patterns that came before us. Yes. And we're doing it. We're the ones that really got into the alternative healings. We're the one that's saying, make love, not war. We're the generations that kind of standing up and saying, you know, there is a way for a better life. Let's really start it. But then we got into the 70s and the 80s where we got kind of selfish and we lost that momentum. We're now gaining it back. Yep. And I, I and I really feel like the kids of the 80s and the 90s came to remind us that we had it right in the 60s, in the beginning, we need to reconnect to that part, as you said, to connect to those values. You, you know, you, you bring up something um, that, that's um, been a lot on my mind lately. I've, I've had the opportunity in, in the past three months to really get to know the new tech community in San Francisco, which mm-hmm. are, you know, early, mid, late 20s, maybe early 30s at the oldest. And what had struck me um, was how, and, and actually kind of the motivation, now that I'm thinking uh, you know, even more fully about why I'm so fired up, um, as I started driving them around, I, I went into this and I was looking for that new energy, that enlightenment from this generation. And what I found was the 90s tech boom all over again with the same sort mm-hmm. of backbiting and competition and me, 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 and you see it in San Francisco, which is completely becoming unsustainable for anyone to live in. I mean, I I helped a friend move Sunday in San Ramon, which is a long way away from San Francisco. It's about an hour outside San Francisco for a two bedroom apartment on the third floor. And this wasn't a grandiose place. This is very middle class at best. $4,200 a month Mm -hmm. to live. That that is so crazy, and I'm going. God, did they not learn anything from the '90s? And I got. I'd hope something was different here. And so I got to talking to this one um, young uh, uh, Chinese AI expert, uh, this this woman, and we started talking about this. And she pretty much said I was right. I was right that it was so competitive that they don't collaborate with one another, that they don't um, work together at all. But here's the other thing, and I was talking with my friend Alan Larson about this. What I've also discovered, they are so open to hearing this message, but nobody's talking to them about it. They're not, when, I, when you start to take them down this path, they have the minds that can understand infinity. They, they get it, but they, have, it, they do need, they, they need to have um, messengers. They need to have guides that'll help them start mm-hmm. these conversations because they're, They've been trapped in the same bubble we all have, but they're ready to get out. We just have to help them help them pop it, if you will. And and that's exactly it. It they are almost hungry for this. And why do you think you and I are on the internet so much? Because that's where they live. That's where they're gonna get the message. Yep. So it's I really think that there is a deeper understanding of of what to do and how to do it. I mean, I, what popped in my head was Taylor Swift and how she really is. She's putting out a message. She is appreciating her fans. She really is a good role model for that generation that is coming in, the ones that from the 90s into the 2000s only because the main reason is she is not just throwing herself out there. She is really holding her own as a woman 
a woman in power who has her stuff together, where there are so many women that I talk to that are really young and they're saying, um, okay, like this guy likes me. Does he really like me? I mean, they're looking for happiness through someone else. Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift is happy within herself. And because of that, I'm sure she will find the perfect guy who's really going to compliment her, not overwhelm her and take over her life. I don't see her allowing that to happen. But it's it's very interesting seeing people of the same generation on opposite ends so very much that it almost it's a balancing. And we do live in this dualistic state right now yes. that we just need to get those messages out and find people that are willing to speak their truth and live their values and we're there we we've been through the ringer because we have been cleaning up seven generations of crap is the way i think about it what did um just so we have a little background talk some more about the seven generations and where that understanding uh, came to you from Actually, it came from Native American. Um, it came from Honoponopono, the Hawaiian healing. I've seen it in many different modalities, and I see it repeated. Um, even when doing meditation and connecting to the essence of me that is from Atlantis, seven generations, um, it's just... The main thing that keeps being repeated, it's a spiritual number. It is a healing number. It is just, I have seen it in so many different places that there is seven generations. Whatever happens in this thing is going to affect seven generations. So mm -hmm. I ha I, I've seen it in different places. I can't say specifically one place. Definitely Honoponopono. For sure. Well, well, that's good. In case, in case anyone wanted to look, at least that gives them a starting place to start to discover. Because it, you know, it's not it's not surprising that it's in infinite other places. Because you know, all of the things uh, as you and I were talking about before we started the interview, we're we're just messengers. And and I and mm -hmm. I believe from my speaking for myself, I'm not a messenger here to tell you. I'm not telling you anything new. What I am saying. And my main message is live out your truth. Live out the things that you're now only talking about. Mm -hmm. Again, these messages of love and unity and abundance and being an infinite being, being a spiritual <coughs> being, we, we, we pay lip service to this in science. We pay lip service to this in religion. We pay lip service to this in reality, in reality, but we're not living it out. And it's time to live it out. What the the amazing things that will manifest in your life you I, I mean even as long as i've been on this path i still can scarcely imagine what i can be fully and it's and i think subconsciously you do know and that's what scares you because it's so massive at least for me it's like i often have told my guidance in meditation i'm not sure i want all that responsibility <laughs> Really? I, so I, I hold myself back. I think also, like you and I were talking about, I, I think that when you're in that out-of-body place, it's very easy to imagine. It's when you come back into the body place, it just it doesn't all fit in here. <laughs> it, it really doesn't, and it's really overwhelming. Yeah. And it's just like we were talking about, it's like, I had this huge epiphany of seeing all the different layers of this one pattern and all these different ways it was showing itself up. And it's like, it was so overwhelming. I wanted to write about it, but it was so much. It's like, okay, where do I start? Yep. Yeah. So Absolutely. it's like, I'm, I'm still formulating how to write that out because it really is showing a pattern of synchronicities. It's showing the patterns of, me waking up and that's the thing that people need to really align with once you get something synchronicities will start happening if you're aware of what's going on yep. i mean i just said okay i want i really would like to know this it's like the other day i said you know i'd really like to see an owl all of a thing i'm seeing physical owls flying around me i saw another one today and i said well thank you <laughs> it's nice that the universe is listening I heard owls this morning. 
all over the place when I was out at the wetlands. So, and it's amazing that, you know, if you really say something from the heart and just let it go, but keep the awareness of it, it is amazing how many things really, opportunities, people, everybody comes into your life specifically because in some way you ask for it. Well, and, and to that point, I, I shared with you, you know, when, and my audience heard my interview with uh, Dr. Jamie Turndorf, yes. a.k.a. Dr. Love, author of Love Never Dies. But I, I think it's worth repeating the synchronicities that exist between me and Jean, her husband, that passed away, that... I have no, there's no conceivable reason for me to have ever been put in the positions or to have the relationships to the, the, the commonalities that I had with him, except that it was leading towards that meeting um, and, and towards us. And, and what specifically I'm talking about is um, I was hired uh, by the Jesuits, what, three years ago to help rebrand and a really old Jesuit retreat center in Los Altos, California. This, this was when Benedict was Pope. And I went in talking to them just like I'm talking to, have talked on every show. And they hired me. And I let them know I have no, I didn't say dis, I didn't say I have a certain amount of disdain for the Catholic Church, but I certainly let it know I'm not a fan of religion and, and the, you know, some of the things that religion has manifest in the world. Um, and I said that we needed to make their messaging um, not about an indoctrination into Catholicism, but a, a, a place of sanctuary for people in the Silicon Valley, because Los Altos is right in the heart, and make it all about love and inclusion. And this is just your practice. And they hired me and let me do that for over a year. And two months after I was hired, Francis became Pope, pope the first uh, Jesuit Pope ever. And on top of that, one of my all-time favorite philosophers, who I didn't know was a Jesuit until I started working with the Jesuits, was Pierre Teladeshadan. Well, and oh, and one other thing, the gentleman who was the priest, who was on the verge of becoming the lay, who was, the, who was a Jesuit priest, um, had also spent his life studying liberation theology. And he was a really, he is a really wonderful guy. His name's Dr. Tom Powers. Um, well, Jean was the founder of liberation theology. He was also the priest that fought the church to make sure women had the right to divorce because he didn't think women should have uh, to stay in bad relationships. He didn't see how that was um, holy at all or divine at all or inspired by God at all or what God would want. Um, and then, um, so here's two, ma well, three major synchronicities. You've got first that Jean is a Jesuit. He's the... Uh, um, founder of liberation theology. And then, guess what? His favorite philosopher was Pierre Delhaud de <laughs> He would go around and quote him all the time. That is um, mathematically impossible for me to have all of those synchronicities unless that was exactly what is meant to be. For me to lead into this meeting with him and for Jamie and I to know that, yeah, Jean is here with us and that I'm supposed to be uh, screaming from the mountaintops, it's time to wake up. And and it's it's very interesting. She will be on my show very soon, so it'll be very interesting what happens with her husband with me. Um, I it it's very interesting that you start seeing the synchronicities and beautiful things. Will just it literally is times that they're showing us those synchronicities. So we do wake up and start sh shouting from the mountains time, hello, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Um, or here's a suggestion of what you really need to do. Um, the other thing that we were talking about before is the very fact that it's time for people to take responsibilities for what they're thinking, what they're saying, their actions, and truly living in those values. And there's a lot of people who um, want somebody else to do it, not them. So it, it is a time that, for me, I, I throw the responsibility back a lot on my clients because they want me to tell them what to do. And it's like, what would you like to happen? It's up to you. Um, and people don't like it. They don't like somebody making them responsible 
And that is something that really needs to shift um, in the consciousness is you truly are responsible for your synchronicities or your misery. And and the ones that do grow immensely. I, you you know the the young school teacher that um you know we both counsel in India. Mm-hmm. She gets it, and oh, yeah. and she responds to that. It's on you. It's don't don't you know we're we're yes we can share with you the wisdom that's being shared with us, but don't you know we're not a crutch. This you're going to have to learn to walk on your own. And she responds to that, and she gets it. And that's what everyone needs to understand. You, you know, whether it's um, any sort of a healer that you go see, ultimately you getting well, you being healthy, you being whole, it's up to you. And the other thing is you won't start to really heal till you're really ready and wanting to heal. So you can spend tons of money on going to all these people, but unless you really want to change, you're not going to. And I, and I think the first step in wanting to change is is um, under moving from a place of doing to a place of being. Under finding your purpose, find understanding that it's not about what, why, or where. And this again probably sounds like a broken record to a lot of people, but it's worth repeating. It's about how. It's about how you are having the experience that you are having for God, for the infinite, in love. How am I having, that's all that matters. How you are having the experience of the moment. That is the only thing that's real. If you're happy with how you're having that experience of the moment, great, then then you've found your purpose. If you can go into your soul and look around the world and, and feel that you are one, feel happy, feel whole, then you have found your purpose. You've found your reason to be, how to have that experience of being. Exactly. It's like they say, you have to be happy where you are in the moment. If you're not, change. Yep. It's just that simple. You want differently, choose different. You want to be different, choose differently. And it really is a time of, and ultimately it's figuring out, at least for me, and I think for you, figuring out we are just love. We are infinite. And the more we connect to our, well, it is becoming 100% connected to that divine within you. You do that, you got it. Yep, and and here's an, and here's another thought, and um, it's something. It's funny. It's it, it really resonated with of all people, uh, Dean Radin from Noetic Sciences, uh, who's been on my show. Uh, he's the chief science officer for Ions, which is Edgar Mitchell's uh, organization, Edgar Mitchell, the astronaut. And when I had him on his sh- uh, the show, I started talking about um, the idea of the rapture. Um, as being not something where you look over and, oh my God, where'd Jennifer go? Where did Kip go? Where did uh, all my loved ones go if they were to vanish suddenly? I think it's more of, um, of you just, you're gone without any trace of being with exception of maybe the essence of what you were trying to impart on people left behind. So I'm not, I'm also not entirely sure that we all um, transform at the same time. I mm-hmm. think we're all, you know, we're, some of us are, are, um, you know, we're, as you said, more ready than others. And I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Well, it, you know, it's all, everybody comes in with certain lessons and certain aspects of what they really are here to learn and be. More and more people are getting a shift because of the whole happening of 2012 and instead of the timeline for humanity going down, it's beginning to go up. So a lot of people got a lot of their like karmic lessons kind of washed out or pressed in really quickly so they could get the lessons and push forward. So it really is now more and more people are getting ready or have been ready and it's just getting the momentum and relaxing a little bit to push it forward i mean think about pluto i mean here's a planet that has been spiritually invisible and yet such a prevalent of change and forcing it uh, it hits energy on you, and now we can see it. It's like now people will believe 
Pluto is real. It's it's. I saw a really funny piece between Steve Corbell and, and um, Neil. Oh God, now I can't. DeGrasse Tyson. Yeah, and it's just like he really he. It's a, it because it's a physically small planet. That's why it's considered a dwarf planet. And the interaction between them, it's like, but it's real. So it's a planet, you know. And and they went back and forth on because of its size. It doesn't matter the size. It's the power it has behind it um, for anything. It's like I, I use in the show I did earlier tonight, actually, um, the example of you may not realize smiling at someone had enough push for them to make a change. Yes. That is so important. I tell that to people every day. It's like when you're talking about helping people, helping people to heal, uplifting people, it doesn't have to be the grand gesture of saving someone from falling off a cliff or, or anything of that magnitude or, you know, rushing in and saving a baby from a burning house, although those are all wonderful things. <laughs> but it can be simple. And, and I've told this story before. When I was over in Hawaii recently, the last day I was there, I went into the shave ice shop. And there was this young kid there, maybe 16, 17, 18, not sure exactly. And he would take these giant mounds of ice and he would mold them and sculpt them and sculpt them down until they'd fit into this little tiny cup. And there was something very artistic and graceful and almost dance-like about his movements. And after he got done doing everything, I said, you know, dude, I said, you're an artist, man. I said, that's really beautiful what you do. And looked at me and, he, and you could tell he was just filled up all of a sudden and he looked at me and said thank you then he walked across the store and he turned around and he, and he looked at me again and he goes no man really thank you you made my day mm -hmm. just that acknowledgement if we give one another is so incredibly incredibly powerful um one other thing uh, you touched on that i think is something that's been bouncing around my head it's very f we're, we're very funny it's like everything that is is Yet, we, in our current mechanical view of things, in our current, our current mechanical view of science, until science says it's there, it's not there. Mm -hmm. it, that's not how it works, folks. Everything is there already. Science doesn't make things. It just proves what's already there. So, you know, sometimes science can get a little bit on the... On the side of ego a little bit too much and think that they are creating something when all they are doing is perceiving of something that already exists. You know, you have the thought, guess what? It's real. Yes. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting how there is this thought form that, as you were saying before, that there are so many things that we don't realize that we're doing, but yet at the same time, the power of it, the fact, the synchronicities of you having all those experiences with the Jesuit, and now you're connecting with someone very powerful who really is one with God when he was in physical form, and now he's with you as a guide in the spiritual form. Think of all the little pieces that came before then to this moment, all the things that just needed to be in the right alignment for you to have that true aha moment. Well, I, I really think, and I think you and I've talked about this before, I think looking at my own personal experience um, is that like when I was 12, not only did I have the experience with infinity, but I, I lost any trust in my family for a variety of reasons I where, where I was surrounded by love or I thought I was that all went away and my trust in love went away entirely um, not only that but this was the same time that I was going to Sunday school as a Zion Lutheran getting ready for confirmation all of this stuff um, and I had the minister tell me that um, my grandmother who was Jehovah's Witness and these young Mormon boys were going to go to hell. And that didn't settle with me because God was loving me. Well, this is what God's about. I'm not having anything. So I was completely hollowed out of everything. And then I went on a real journey of 
of being in shadow and having all of these other experiences until I came back out and I was completely hollow and to the point literally of standing facing death and then I was filled back up again Mm -hmm. and filled back up with love and back to where I was before I was hollowed out back to where I was before I lost the trust before I lost the faith and I realized I had to go through that to say that I have no reason by any earthly standards, by any societal standards, to be the person I am today, except that I had to have this journey to share with others. Exactly. And it gets to that point of, as we were talking before, are you having the experience to have the experience? Are you having the experience to just express it, to share it? I think to share it because it's all the universe, infinity, creation. It's all about this collaborative process, this collaborative love story ever unfolding that we're telling. And yes. these these little dramas. And, and this is the way to look at these things. Try not to hold on too tight to your dramas. Let them be what they are. Let them be those experiences, those aha moments, those awakenings that you get to share with somebody else when the time is right. And that's and when the time is right, you will have no problems expressing yourself, um, and the right people will come to listen. That's the one thing that that I have noticed is the repeating pattern for me to seem voiceless, meaning I'm talking, but I feel like I'm in an empty vacuum, like. Who am I talking to? You know, a few people will come around, but overall, the people that I really wanted to listen to me, to hear me, wanted not one moment uh, to listen. They just, uh uh-huh, uh-huh, right, and just passed me by. Once I let go of that need for anyone certain to hear me, boom, everything opened up. And I had the experience by connecting with a tree that was being cut outside and I was furious because they were cutting off way too much and I literally felt like the tree saying why are you cutting so much off I understand this stuff but this wasn't part of the picture here folks you're going too far and I feel like a lot of humanity is screaming that but nobody's hearing them And I think it's time for us as a messenger to say, hey, folks, it's time for you to listen. And and you just hit on something really important. For me, what I feel the next transformation will be, will be, and and I've talked about this a, a few times, there's a difference between the soul self and what society's constructed as the ego self. Right. The soul self has preferences it's having an experience but it's not saying my experience is very it's not even it wants to share those experiences so when jennifer right. is just talking about that experience of having a shared experience with the tree that's what it's about folks it's about not just being able to move from one person to another and having shared experiences of being able to go wow i mean think about what a marvelous way to be that would be and and only again if the others want to share but being able to say hey let's Let's swap experiences here. I want to see what your life feels like. I want to see what your life tastes like. I want to see what your life, uh, what your vision of the world is. I want to see what the sounds, how you interpret the sounds. And be able to do that through a dolphin, a tree, not just other human beings. There's shows like, and I, and I think there's more and more of this happening. I think this is what tech is really trying to express, is this amazing ability to have shared experiences only we don't need the technology ultimately i think this right. is what you see with the 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 um explosion of the transgender movement is people saying i'm not this one physical form i'm i'm something else and they're just ripping their skin to not be imprisoned anymore right and then you've got shows like there's a, a new show on netflix called sense eight and this is exactly what they're talking about, only they're talking about human beings being able to literally share all the same experiences simultaneously as our next evolution. And I think that that story you just told about the tree is 
where I see the next transformation moving us towards. Right. And and I think that there are more and more people having those experiences. It's interesting. I was guided and literally it's amazing the things that they show me. There was um, a PSA done about nature and they have these people um, like the one that I, I posted actually on um, Facebook was about Earth. And literally, Julia Roberts was saying, I'm Earth. I don't need you humans. I've been here for millions and billions of years before you even existed. Get a clue of what you're doing. You're not better than us. You're not better than me. I'm here to support you. We need to work together not against each other, not to have that competition of I can destroy you because guess what, humans, I can destroy you very easily. Get a clue on who you truly are. It was just a really powerful, we're here to share this message, share this experience, not try and beat each other up. Yeah. Energy me... out is the energy you get back. And I, it was just a really well done video series. And they do water and they do soil and they do trees. And it really was a beautiful series of saying, hello, humans, pay attention to what you're doing. It, it's so f- funny that you mentioned that um, this morning, something else that I was uh, that I had I had um, written, I said, swords, guns bombs slashing firing exploding and timeless blood-soaked deserts little spoiled children hurling stones calling each other heinous names in the playground sandbox these are no different they are the same grow up little boys and girls pretending to be men and women forgetting they are souls they are not powerful just vain and insane playing age after age hateful loveless games the gods do not weep for them they laugh for they know the pain man feels is self-inflicted and have the and have they and they have only themselves to blame. Exactly. Exactly. And I think these kind of messages are what people need to hear to really sit back and say, "Huh, really? Is that? Wow, that's that's true." Um, it it's just the connection with nature and appreciating. It's the shamanic way. I mean. That's the power and the magic of being shaman is the fact that you respect every living thing, everything, even a rock. Everything has energy. Everything has a purpose here. It's just recognizing it and letting it do what it needs to do. Everything moves. Everything changes. Everything flows, even a rock. Exactly. Exactly. We may not see it because we perceive of time so much differently, but it's movement. There isn't anything that isn't moving, isn't ever changing. And, and you know, I, I, it, to the ego port, the, this, this myth that we tell ourselves that we are the most highly evolved species on this planet, it's like, where is that coming from? The fact really? that we can find new ways to consume more, more uh, on a larger and larger scale, the way that we can... Uh, destroy more uh, efficiently these are signs of intelligence I don't think so if you're in the ocean and you swim with dolphins or you swim with these other amazing sea creatures how they've existed for 30 million years they're one literally flowing with their world with this world we're not so where is the where where is this mythology coming from that we are more evolved and more highly intelligent and that we control things when we don't it, it, it's it's just man feels it needs to be superior in some way because we are so small yeah and and, and but that, that that's some the, the, it most any time in my experience in life that i run into someone with a massive ego Usually beneath that massive ego is a very insecure, frightened being. Yes. Almost always. And that's really what we are. We are so afraid of the unknown, so afraid of being small that we make ourselves small. And in fact, I ask a friend of mine, why do we continue to make ourselves so small by claiming we're so large? 
it's it is amazing the fact that the energy now is such that it is expanding so fast. I truly feel like it does overwhelm people. So they crunch down and kind of consolidate as much as they can because it is expanding them so much. They don't know how to handle that energy. So it's it makes them feel very insecure because it is ever so changing and it is really speeding up. You know, it's already the end of July, folks. Where did time go? I mean, time is an illusion and we make it what it is. But at the same time, it's just like, I think a lot of people are getting overwhelmed by the truth of everything that is happening, the truth of the fact that they're coming to a point, they understand they really are creating what they are and who they are and remembering and allowing that creation to thrive in this place without all those things around. It's amazing the amount of people that I am recognizing that have this mindset that I had no clue that they were so aware. And it may be that they're not even really sure of how aware they truly are. They may be just as we were talking about, talking it, not walking it. Yet a lot of times I'm seeing that they're really walking it more than just talking it. And right now being very trusting self and being really impeccable with your word to yourself and others is really, really important. It's really walking your talk more than just lip service. Absolutely. And I couldn't agree with you more about, in fact, I'm, I feel some days, in fact, more and more often that it's like, why even bother sleeping? I'm going to be awake in five seconds. It's like, it just, the days, everything is quite literally melding into, into one, which is what it should do. It's just, it's such a different experience to have that adjusting to that is, is a little bit disconcerting. It can feel a little bit uncomfortable moving from your known to your unknown. But you're going to find as, as, we, as you move more fully into that unknown, you're going to find happiness and bliss beyond your wildest imaginings. Yes. Um, and it's just, I am finding for myself, the more I put something out there and wait, pretty soon the opportunity will happen. I can respond to it more than me trying to force anything to happen. It's more like I keep repeating those synchronicities are happening and it's just being aware and responding to those synchronicities with gratitude, with love and moving forward. In the last, we've got about seven minutes of the show left. And one thing we've never done because we always run out of time is let's talk about what Jennifer Hillman's doing. Share, share all of the things that are going on in Jennifer Hillman's world. Um, I am in the, always in the process of, it seems like, redesigning Jennifer Hillman. Um, but I Not have been. All. Yeah, it's a daily Not occurrence. Jennifer Hillman ourselves. But it's like I've been working on my website. I do have Abstract Illusions Radio is now back on. It's on a couple hours before this show. And it really is about exploring the creativity of the human potential. Um, so I have a lot of interesting guests on there. I'm going to be having Kip on. He's already said yes. Um, but I also within this, I have been very much cleared that I need to have my voice on there more. So every once in a while, like every three weeks or six weeks or whatever, I, I'm going to be taking the show and just talking about my experience and, and kind of teaching a class through the, the radio show. Um, I'm also doing a lot of writing and really looking through a lot of the writings that I have done over the last 15 years and organizing them to get them out in some kind of book form or class form. or So I'm doing a lot of organization right now, but really recreating the life um, 
I've been talking about and really creating it uh, and having some amazing experiences along the way, like the tree. It's like I'm reconnecting to the truth of who I am and having a good time doing it. So if, if people would like to get some coaching, because that's, that's something I really do and love doing, um, go to Jennifer Hellman and the information's on there. You can also go to Angels Intuition and connect me through there. But JenniferHellman.com is really the best place to connect with me. And, of course, I'm on the social media. I'm on Facebook and um, I'm on Twitter and I'm just like everywhere. So you'll find me. Um, it's interesting that there actually are, and it always blows my mind when I see that there's actually about five Jennifer Hellmans if you do a search for Jennifer Hellman. All of them are doctors, teachers, healers, really Big, so I feel like I have um, a lot of support by my namesakes. Um, so overall, that's I'm always available to help someone get a clue, shall I say? And but, and and again, what your show is on at what time? It's um 7 p.m. PST uh, or that's east. It, that would be that's uh, Eastern time. It's four o'clock okay. on Pacific time. Okay. And uh, catch it. You can also go to YouTube if you look up Jennifer Hellman on YouTube. You can catch me there as well. Because I and that is on w l o r dot net. Yes. And do not caps lock on that. Otherwise, you'll never get to the page. It has to be in lowercase. I found out. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, I was actually Jamie was trying to get uh, Doctor Turndorf was trying to get to my website to help from, or to the WLR website. And I had it all in caps because I thought, wow, that's going to draw people's attention. Um, she's like, I can't, you can't get to that link. I'm like, well, thank you so much for sharing that with me. And you couldn't until I, until I put in lowercase. So yes, I um, was asked by Sherry to come back um, and do the show. I had taken a little bit of a break because I was getting, kind of burnt out by everything I was doing but now I'm in a really good balance and um, a good understanding of where I am so things are improving daily so that's my goal is to help other people understand who and what they're about and um, if there's resistance I, I do kick ass as you know. We, we've got two about two minutes left. Could you share with us if you've got anything on, on the top of your head, something you've written? Oh, that I've written uh, right off the top of my head. I really don't. Well, not putting you on the spot. Or anything. No, not at all. We, OK, I opened my copy of my book, Words okay. of the Heart, and it's Dance of Dances. Dance of Dances. We do it well. Three steps together. Side step four, twist and turn, we face each other again. Consistent pattern, patterns of this we must agree. Musics change, movements don't. The interplay of the dance, the passion shared with promise and dissent. So attract, yet detached. Look within the words you say. Play the game once more and begin. Turning and playing, yet pulling on each other. Steps right in denial. Apologize on clue, on cue. The moment of dramatic silence to enhance. Take a breath and regroup. Change the music. You turn with a smile, hand in hand. You pull me out, twist me around. This is the way we all begin to live again perfect and jennifer thank you so much for being my friend and for being an uh an amazing guest once again on the just love show and thank you for having me on take care